Good morning, guys. My name is Paolo. I am the uh, creative director here at ECME, and I'm here at ECME Mechanica and wanted to show you some of the really cool projects that we have going on. Specifically today, we've got a 360 Challenge Stradale manual conversion. I have the lead tech and manager, shop, shop manager. I don't really know what I do here. But uh, math scientist, <laughs> Matha, who's gonna go over all the pieces. Uh, essentially, we got the F1 system here. Yes, this is mostly all the components that come off the car and stay off the car. Um, so you can see the harness here, you have the main power system, the actuator, the F1 accumulator, reservoir, pump, solenoids. You have these pretty little paddle shifters and the ECU. Also the original center tunnel, which we'll go through on another video and process of 3D scanning and kind of working through and the little pieces that way. Yeah, so essentially what's going to happen is you're no longer going to have reverse right. button, mm -hmm. neutral, or launch control. Launch control, yeah. okay. So there are going to be essentially some some buttons that are going to be need to be removed, and then you also need a place for the new shift tower. Also. Right, exactly. So it's, the unit sits much higher, as you can see from the original, but we're trying to keep the feel of the Challenge Stradale since it's a very, very special car, even from the inside. You can tell that it's quite different than the normal F1. Yeah, and so additionally, so we have the transmission out actually, as you can see. And so we will we have everything out. And here is another actuator because we actually have uh, three projects going on right now. Simultaneously, uh, yeah. But this one in particular, we had we had completed, and we wanted to improve the feel of the shift mechanisms. Yeah. So essentially, then we will go through how the F1 system originally worked. This is all the same, correct? So there's right. no swapping of parts internally of the transmission. The shift forks and synchros. Diff. Diff. Those will be, those will all wear differently when you're using an F1 system versus a manual. And we will actually, we'll be going over all of that. So this is the side selector for the gearbox. This is the manual one. Here's the F1 version with the hydraulic lines and everything. I'll come back and explain how this works. But let's go take a look at the inside of the gearbox to get a better understanding of exactly what it's doing. So this is the inside of the gearbox that we've taken apart to take a closer look at some of the particles we found. But let me explain how the F1 and manual gearbox system works. Essentially the inside is exactly the same. Uh, a lot of people get confused and think it's an automatic gearbox. but it's really a manual gearbox that's controlled robotically with pneumatic fluid. And this is how it works. So we have the in selection up and down, and then the engagement, which actually selects the gears and goes left and right. So what this does is this rotates up and down. And what you have at the top is you have reverse. So this will go up. This piece slides over, selects reverse and then goes back into the middle, comes down, not all the way here, right about here, then selects this shift fork that's connected here, slides it over, then you have first, second, goes back, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And that changes your gear ratios. This is attached to another shaft that goes to the clutch. So you have the engine turning the primary shaft, rotating all these, and then what connects it are the shift forks, sliding the synchros. And what it does is as it slides, it locks in the gear. So this is spinning freely normally, and then it locks it in. So once it locks it in, spins the output shaft onto the diff, and the diff 
translates this to this and spins the wheels. But now let's go back and take a look at the F1 system and understand how that works. So the F1 system, essentially same thing, nothing inside the gearbox changes when you're doing a conversion from F1 to manual. And what happens here is you have a bunch of solenoid valves that are controlling fluid flow. So you have fluid flow that can change this. Oh, this one's a little, lot tougher to move, but it essentially pressurizes the system, balances the fluid, and goes up and down. What's easier to understand is not the selection, but the engagement. So the engagement, you have two solenoids. When both on, both pressures keep it center. Then one turns off and another one keeps it on and slides this piece over. So that's equivalent to moving the shifter around. And if you look at it this way, this can translate over here to, oops, I'm sorry, this way. So you have your selection and then when you go in, that's your engagement. And you can imagine how that lays over into the gearbox. One of the concerns this client had was the way the car shifts once we were able to convert the car to manual transmission. The first concern was the return to center. So you can sit, see here, the shifter likes to rest between third and fourth. And the shifter turret mechanism itself, or shift tower, uh, shifts perfectly fine between third and fourth. But once everything was installed in the car, the issue was that the car would either rest between first and second, or fifth and sixth. What we had found was on a factory unit, it likes to spring back between third and fourth. And this is set up with a check ball here, a spring, and a detents on the rod itself. It makes it just want to rest in that position. So the issue that we had was with an aftermarket piece that did not want to spring back into neutral. So what could happen in this case is if you're shifting and the car decides to rest between first and second and you're driving along and then you want to shift into third and you go and push it up into first instead, you let go of the clutch, over rev, boom, game over. So. Initially, it was, oh, you know, it's not a big deal to return to center, but it's actually very important when you're, when you're on a racetrack, you're not paying attention exactly to where it is, you're not looking down, you're paying attention to track. You just want to shove it in the third. So, what we had found was this was the issue, and we just went back to an OEM shift cover. You can see there's a lot of action and a lot of cysts back there. You can feel it a tiny bit on this, but not enough to return the shifter. The next concern was the grinding of the gears in between, and as much as we tried to adjust the shift cables, we could not dial it in. We'd be able to get first and second grade, or first and third grade, fifth grade, but then all the other ones would, would be affected with every little adjustment we did. So then we decided to crack into the gearbox, See if we had any particles in there that caused this. So to explain this a little better, this goes over here to the side of the gearbox. Attach a bunch of cables to the front, to the shift lever. Those gears that you saw, primary shaft, secondary shaft, go through this way. Actually, let me bring the Output shaft over. So you can kind of get a better idea of how the diff works. So this, this one, this output shaft comes out through here, and the diff goes in here come around to the other side. This through here. 
So when we had drained the gearbox, found some interesting little party sprinkles. Here, not too bad. We cleaned up most of it. This was uh, on a second run, changing out the fluids. But what was more concerning was this larger chunk we had here. That's like, it's like a pebble there. Yeah. And how did you find it? So this filter here, so we drained it. Uh, we didn't, we couldn't see much. There was some brass in the fluid. It's kind of old. This filter here sits through here. And this is the gearbox oil pump. Pumping fluid through the unit and filters out through here before it gets recirculated through the casing of the gearbox. Okay, so that sits here on the end. Yes. So all the gears go in there, most of the gears. This goes in the back. You have a few other gears here for reverse. You have an idler gear pump here. And rear of the car. Correct. Front of the car. Clutch and pressure plate go through here and attaches to the engine. Okay. And you're mentioning that there was some play. Yes, when we were looking around to try to figure out exactly where this particle was, um, the closest thing we were able to find was in here. Some play is, is normal. see how much play is on this input shaft. There is another bearing from the primary shaft that goes in there that kind of stabilizes this, but we have signs of it hitting on the casing here. So as we're going this through this, we replace the bearings. Uh, also the synchros that we had mentioned earlier. Over here, they didn't look too bad, but while all everything's out, replace the bearings, the sink rows. The forks also sometimes can be an issue. Uh, sometimes you can have bent forks, which actually we can go back to the solenoids and the F1 system. So when you're shifting in a car, if you feel something that's strange, you kind of you kind of hold it back a little bit. Come on, bitch. Come on, bitch. But on the F1 system, like I spoke of, the solenoids force it to go one way or the other. You have 60 bar of pressure pushing it one way or the other, and it's gonna make it happen whether it wants to or not. So it pushes it this way. If it's if it's not going into gear, it's still gonna keep applying that pressure until it senses something's wrong and then you have a gearbox light, which is another huge advantage to getting rid of the system. There are a lot of issues with it. This was the last, since this is a challenge Stradale project, uh, this was the last version, uh, updated version for the F1 system, which should be pretty great, but unfortunately it's not. At the time, it was probably amazing. Well, that wraps it up here today at East Bay Mechanica. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll be going over how we're gonna be recreating that new carbon tunnel for the 360 Challenge Rally manual project. Mm -hmm.